Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to our conversation. I'm Cullen Line. I'm the Youth Ministry Coordinator here at St. Anne's. Welcome to the 2021 uh, co-host. Yes, what a welcome to 2021 year to yourself. It's great to yeah. see you, Father Matt. Um, I guess we've been away a, a little bit. I mean, we sort haven't been of. lazy. We've, no. You've, you've <laughs> we been working. You put your hours in, I guess. But yeah, uh, yeah Merry Christmas. Thank you. You too. Uh, how, how was this season for you? It is so different. <laughs> yeah. Like a... Uh, I, I did have some time with my family. I'm one of those people who lives alone, and so I can break into someone else's bubble. So I, I did go to my parents' place for a few days, and it was just really nice to have good, quiet, relaxing time. I was mostly just in the house, not doing a whole lot when I was there. Yeah. Um, we do have, we have a snowmobile that never worked, and so my sister's boyfriend fixed it up for my dad for Christmas, and then we couldn't get it to start. <laughs> so we <laughs> thought we'd have some outside time, and then we didn't after all. So it was mostly just... It's just 2020 Even being 2020 <laughs> right down to the end, right? There you go. As, uh, the memes are all talking yeah. about. But uh, but like the masses I found, like it was beautiful and it was hard being down to 30 people at these masses. Like sure. it's always hard, but I found it was more so this time because we also had a, a lot of them for Christmas. And then we had the first week in a Holy Family and then Feast of Mary, Mother of God. And then next weekend, like a lot of those masses without a lot of people present. And I'm really feeling that great to have the people there, but the lack of amount that we can have right now yeah yeah it was uh i was doing some of the online welcoming you know for christmas eve mass and yeah. we were there as a family and it, I, I i can't say it was nice it, it was nice i think we made we made the best of it mm -hmm. you know yeah. and and we tried to saw the grace of like oh we still you know i dressed up and sharon's like this i was like it's still christmas we're still gonna mark it yeah even if i took my suit off 10 minutes after mass <laughs> <laughs> you know that's nice um but also the brace of like it, it gave us some potentially only a, you know a, a one year tradition but it was like well, we can do stuff a little bit different you know yeah, and, and we yeah. have some fun with it and uh i can't remember to list all the things we did but i i i appreciate it. it was like the what does this make possible and it's like okay you know let's let's lean into this and i appreciated some of our family it was a lot of time off i had because couldn't take breaks and visit some family that was my plan in the fall so I think I was like gone for like 21 days basically oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. from work besides a few of these things. Um, so it was a good break and I was sharing like I, I was just tired mm -hmm. and I mean three kids at home and for 21 days, like I was still tired over Christmas. It was lots of fun and board games yeah. and tobogganing, but um, I, I'll be honest, I needed a mental, mental break. I dare not throw out the word reset. People get freaked yeah. out and all that stuff, but, <laughs> oh, boy. but the, yep. <laughs> that'll take. push us up in the algorithm right there. Just using that <laughs> word. But just just the idea of, of, of to take a pause, um, yeah. and so I, I I was very grateful for that for that time, um, even if it was mostly in the confines of the walls of my house. But and some beautiful weather. Yeah, that's um, true. So that's the really one thing we kind of complain about this year has been the winter. Like it's been really wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So it was it was great to get on the hill and do some backyard uh, skating with some family because oh. that's that's still that's still a thing I guess. So yeah. uh, that was nice to do a few back backyard outdoor visits with some people and. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I, I don't want to do it again, yeah. but, uh, yeah. I think we found some, some great little ways. Uh, our family did a little YouTube caroling playlist we did for kind of my parents and mm -hmm. some people maybe saw us share it online and, uh, just trying to find, take old traditions and make them new again. And so it, it was, yeah. it, it was, it was exhausting and different, but it was also, it's also kind of fun and unique. Yeah. yeah, no, that's great. And that's the best you can do at these times. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's yep. it's good to have some normal to be back here. So oh yeah, yeah. Uh, new year, same old duo sitting on the couch. There we go but, again. Uh, what yeah. do you have to offer us this weekend? Okay, just jumping right into it. All right. Well, we did have a lot of homilies since the last one, but I think we'll focus on the more recent one, which mm -hmm. was Epiphany. And the 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 focus that I did for the homily was that idea of of us being the light, sharing the word. And there was a great actually. Maybe I'll read a little bit of it from the first reading. Arise, shine. For your light has come. And I really took that as a, a challenge for us. That we see the star both as literally there guiding the Magi. And also as a symbol of what we are all called to be. Mm -hmm. So really this call to, to mission, to evangelization. That we talk about a lot here. Because the message we need to hear. And really what our Lord calls us to. Mm -hmm. And then I thought the focus I took as I was praying through the gospel. Was a call of to be witness and to be word. And witness in terms of sharing faith with our actions, with our love, and then word being sharing faith with the actual words that we speak. And I was struck too, going through the gospel that we always focus on the stars, the star leading them to the place where Jesus was. 
but the star itself was not enough. That the star got them to Jerusalem, but then we do meet the Magi in Jerusalem saying, where do we go now? What do we do next? Mm -hmm. And well, what did give them that final direction? Well, it was people who knew the word of God saying, well, this is what the word of God tells us about where this child will be born. And so I thought if I take the star as that witness, as that sign that people can follow, and then the word as the direction, directing people to the savior. That's I thought the, that's what we're called to, I guess. Yeah, I thought it was uh, really smart and, and just kind of holding those those two, right? Sometimes we always get caught up in our analogies or symbols or images and we kind of lock them in and and to say, well, we, we can flip them around sometimes. And mm. I, even even that the, the scripture, arise, shine for your light yeah. has come. Well, no, the light shines, but no, you shine because your light has come. Like even just yeah, the, that, the, that, the word play of, of, of how the Holy Spirit works through that, right? Is, yeah. uh, I, re I really love that, you know, and... Uh, I mean, it's just hard as we're coming through the end of 2020, you know, 2021 of like, and I was, I was nervous to see is like, how are people entering 2021? And I hope it's not just good riddance 2020. Cause mm -hmm. let's be honest, there, there is a lot of darkness. But it was like, are we going to focus on the darkness? We're going to focus on the light that has come and the light that w we can be. Right. And so I, yeah. I just thought this homily and the reading, the epiphany landing where it did, it was just pretty, pretty timely, I think. Yeah, that, that the image, it seems so much of Advent and Christmas is that light and darkness. Yeah, that's a good image. And then the, the challenge that I I thought where we would talk through it here was the idea of if we are called to be light by witness and by words, by both living our faith and talking about our faith. And then I made the point, and I think you may kind of disagree, which is OK. We'll talk about that, <laughs> both that that as Catholics in general, I find we are more comfortable being the, the witness of faith, sharing it by, by our actions and by our love, less comfortable, maybe less good at sharing it by words. And like, yeah, I'm curious, I guess you and, and people online, like, do we see that as true or not? Is okay, question, internet, or, comment Where below. do we see it as true? Yeah, uh, or not true. Column's hot take. Have you cashed my uh, paycheck this month before I disagree with you? No. You, ca you cash your own paycheck. <laughs> <I've> <laughs> That's not how me, it works. Send me the paycheck. <laughs> yeah, maybe. My tithing just went up dramatically this month. Right. The, uh, I, I don't, I guess this is the tension. Even the wording there from when we pre-talked, I think uh -huh. you changed it a little bit because <laughs> you said comfort was if we're talking about competency, like I'll kind of disagree. I, I agree in, in comfort and maybe practicality of like how how much are we doing it? Mm -hmm. I, I think there's a place for that, right? Um, but I sit here, you know, in a church in, a, in 2000 plus years later to say like, well, we're obviously decent at it. Yeah, because we went from success. 12 to, you know, like, I don't know what the number of Christians is, but it's like, yeah. at some point we've shared the word. Mm -hmm. um, but in the context of where we are, how well are we doing it now? And yeah. I, I think that's a very relevant question and a fair question. And and I think there is some truth that where you haven't, maybe we're not at our best. We're, you know, I don't think we're Acts of the Apostles level. You no, know, no, where we're, no. you know, on fire with the Spirit and going and our shadows are healing people. You know, like... I, I think we can sharpen the sword as as it as it were, and I but I do get nervous sometimes where we we get caught into tropes or limiting mm -hmm. beliefs. Is a guy Michael Hyatt, that guy that what does this make possible that I loved and we chat yeah. about and he talks about this sometimes as well, like we catch ourselves in mindsets or beliefs of like, well, we're just not good at that. Or like, that's not the Catholic thing. We're, so you don't want to give you know, into Yeah. And I like that phrase. That's not the Catholic thing. Cause I do feel like even when I was growing up in the church, and even like into my twenties, I'm nearly 40, not quite 40 yet. I'm coming very close to it. <laughs> but like, even up into my twenties, I feel like even the word evangelization was not a word that people like to use in Catholic circles. Yeah. Like it was kind of, it was looked down on. That was like those, those Protestants do that. But like, we are not, we, but I feel like there has been a shift, at least in language in the last, I don't know, 15 years or so. Yeah. I, I know the, the popes have been leading, like they've been calling us to evangelize like for a long time. For sure. But in terms of getting to the larger church, at least in Canada, I feel like it's more of a recent adoption of this kind of language. But I would I would even say even in the popes in the, the last few encyclicals, it's gotten even much more explicit. Yeah. Right. And, and primary. Right. And going back to that, the church exists to evangelize. Like, I mean, that's we got whole encyclicals about this. Yeah. But even like joy, the gospel, like I thought that really embraced the two of the witness and the word. Right? I thought Pope yeah. Francis did a very good job of, of framing that. And it, I was somewhat caught off guard when that came out. I forget what year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not good with my history of encyclopedias, but like, yeah. almost some people like caught off guard of like, wow, this is so radical. And I was like, 
is it? Is it? <laughs> like, I mean, it is beautiful and great, but like, maybe he's just capturing really well what we're about and maybe we've been lacking in, right? And, he, yeah. and he's kind of pointing it out. And and I think it's also sometimes, not this idea of limiting belief or we, we're just quick to say, yeah, Catholics, we don't do this well. We don't evangelize or what. Is also like, the idea of, you know, we talk about fake news or real news, but it's also like, w- where's your sources? Like, what what are you looking at? Yeah. Like, it, are, it, are you looking at the experience of your parish on Sunday? Yeah. You know, is it that? Are you looking at some of these evangelical movements? We have one founded in Saskatoon, Catholic Christian Outreach, right? Yeah. I just participated because I was allowed to, even though I'm an old, young adult now, of the Rise Up <laughs> Conference Online that had over 1,500 people and people across many, many countries and people's lives being transformed via Zoom. Like, so like... I'm, I'm, I'm listening there. I'm like, we're doing that well. Yeah. But if you're not in that circle, that's not your context, right? So what you present could be very true. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so that's where I kind of struggle with that to say, you know, what is my tendency? I think that's what we have to take from it is that yeah. when you presented the witness and words is to say, uh, it's easy to make a snap judgment of what I think the church is doing and how well we're doing it. I don't think that's useful. I don't really want to talk about that. Okay. I want to kind of go there. And I think neither do you, what you presented is like encouragement is we have to make it much more personal. If we really actually want, if we believe it's true, that's bad. And we want it to be better. That only yeah. happens if we do something about it. Yeah. Like I do think it's worthwhile saying like, where are we as a whole? Like, I don't want to push that away completely. Yeah, no, I agree. And if you ask like where, the kind of where I see that. And one thing I would say on that is I know like when I preach on certain topics, I, I know the sort of feedback I'm going to get. <laughs> I can say that. And I do know like when I preach on our call to like take care of the poor, no one's going to disagree with me. But when I preach on the call to evangelize, like I'm going to get some pushback. <laughs> like I just know that that's, that's been the experience, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it takes, you know, courage, you know, and leadership to go, you know, where we feel we're called to go, where the gospel is yeah. leading us to go. And uh, not that we shouldn't take care of the poor, obviously, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, but that's, that's one thing that we're, we understand we're happy to do. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and, and I, that maybe is a different podcast of like, why is that tendency so often? Right. Is it, mm-hmm. I, cause I'd be the opposite. That was like me reaching out or when I started to do prison ministry years ago uh, for a period of time, that was the most uncomfortable I've ever been in living out my faith life. Because yeah. it was not a, a, a rhythm, a muscle that I was used to. Yeah. Right. So you know, visiting the prison, you know, uh, feeding the poor, that is the uncomfortable stuff for me. Oh yeah. For others, yeah. it's very much not. You know, but me to talk to a thousand kids about the love of Jesus is very, very easy for me to yeah. do, but terrifies other people. So it's. And yeah. that's that's such a good way to to think about it too, because there are certain things that they were going to be more comfortable with. And that we're maybe going to like feel more competent at that. Mm-hmm. And then other things that we're not. And I think to have that awareness of, well, if I am uncomfortable with this call to evangelize, is that because the call is not true or just because it's not my comfort zone? And yeah. another way too, like if I'm not comfortable with this call to visit people in prison, is that because the call is wrong or because I'm not you know, comfortable with it? Yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's where I think that language of, of, of comfort is, is good. And we talk about tendency is... And a lot in the you know circles and leadership, they'll talk about self awareness and you know know yourself and all these things, and you'll mm-hmm. even hear that in the secular culture. But I think that works for our experience of, of faith. Oh yeah, is is to say like how self aware are you? Like what 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 are the the spots that you're very aligned with? Where is the part of there's tension or there's unresolved, you know you know healing or mm-hmm. or just questions or, or just say like yeah that's the part I don't like. That's the yeah. that's the part of the buffet that I just skip over. You know, well, I think that's so much of our faith is that even Jesus says you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Yeah, and not only in terms of the mission, but even in terms of like occasions of sin, like knowing like these are occasions that are not safe for me to be in. Mm-hmm. But I, that self awareness is is key and a lot of aspects of our, our faith lives for yeah. sure. And so I, so for me, this was an, another good opportunity to kind of reflect and to do some of that, you know, look in the new year to say, where is my tendencies? Where am I tripping up or where, where are the parts of my faith that I'm, you know, dodging <laughs> very yeah. obviously um, that the Lord is maybe calling me not to. And to go back to that example of when I, uh, for a period of time, we're sharing on different days. We're part of a group going into uh, urban camp and doing some ministry to some of the inmates was uh, a beautiful experience, but was not a lasting one. That's not a mm-hmm. ministry that I currently do. I have a great appreciation for it. Yeah. Um, and it was an experience in that time 
was it was a thing that I knew God was calling me to do. And it was a great experience of freedom. Yeah. You know, and I had a great understanding of just the other standing of being brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, and how the word connects us and bonds us and heals us. And, uh, and I just try to support it and serve it in, in different ways. And that will loop back around. Um, but it was almost like it was a very tangible moment in my life that the Lord was like, you need to do this to experience freedom and truth. Oh, yeah. Um, you yeah. know, and that might change or go forward, but right now that's, that's why you're uncomfortable and I need you to be uncomfortable so I can break yeah. through. Into and part of the reason, yeah, like that, that it was such a good experience for you was because there was that lack of comfort you had to break through. Like I mean, often when our Lord calls us to those things, those uncomfortable things, there's a lot of fruit to be found on the other side of that. Which yeah. is that willingness to trust enough to, to push through it. Yeah. And people talk about that. Yeah. I mean, new year, new year goals and all that type of stuff that people do. And resolu- I like goals. I'm not so much a resolution person, mm-hmm. but uh, one of these guys that goes into, he talks about the idea of setting goals that are in your discomfort zone, mm-hmm. but not delusional zone. And how often, like in new years, do we have, you know, create you know delusional zone in new year's resolutions right yeah. that's why people get gym memberships and by you know fourth week of january you know everyone i worked going. at a gym in high school and i saw it every year yeah, yeah. we'd have a bump up in you january know, and down where it's like setting reasonable goals but stuff that still stretches you like that's where yeah. it's like people you work out right if you suddenly go from nothing and try to lift 50 pounds and do like 100 reps like you're gonna wreck yourself you know yeah. is you have to like build yourself up but you build yourself up by by strain you know, a little so bit. So if we pull this back to the evangelization, like I think this relates, but we're sort of getting far afield. But yeah. So I guess to loop around, because yeah. I'm long winded as the Irishman is, is I need to like, is it words or witness in this coming year where I, I'm a little uncomfortable? Yeah. And yeah. Maybe, that's a great may, way to pull. Maybe I need to lean into that a little bit more, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, a personal story, you know, a crazy one was just like taking little steps as our family of like, to reach out to neighbors or to couples that we've been meaning to talk to for years and years and years. Okay. And it's just like, yeah. no, no, I'm going to like start that conversation. That's the, that's the first step. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make myself available to have a faith conversation with somebody. Right. Like when someone in my family, cause we have a whole spectrum of faith, someone says something maybe as kind of a sarcastic attack on the faith. I'm not just going to maybe, you know, let it slide away. Yeah, um, I'm not going to be antagonistic, but I might take it as a moment to confront is too harsh okay. of a word. Yeah. But you know what but I mean? But to respond not, in. Not to respond because yeah. maybe that's an opportunity for clarity. Maybe there's a, you know, a misunderstanding that God has put me in this position in this relationship to, to be a bridge. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm not going to pass that up. Like I like that. So you really gave there examples of, of areas of goals for you and both. Huh? So the word one being when you do with those family members who drop these things to to be able to respond well. And then the witness one being something particularly like with neighbors wanting to build that relationship with them. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, and it's, some of it is not like, here's the big scheme or all this type of stuff, but I, in our life, and I don't even think of it like explicit occasions or, or people that I'm targeting. That's not how I think. But yeah. uh, for me anyways, is like, but you want to love your neighbors more. Yeah. And my yeah. professional setting is yeah. I like I'm called to evangelize and like help bring young people to Jesus. That's part of the work and help the yeah. parish do that is like that's built into my job, yeah. you know. And so it could be easy to like say, OK, I did that. I'm, like, I'm well, going to go home and not evangelize anymore. Yeah. yeah. You know, and to yeah. say, but like, how am I encountering my neighbor on the street? How am I uh, encountering, you know, just that new parishioner? Yeah. Or, you know, young married couple or what, like, you know, those, those more organic interactions in the world. Like, where yeah. am I being the star at Michael's Independent? Right. You no. Know? And that's where, like, this pandemic has made it harder as we've had to Understood. make our circle smaller. Those random connections maybe happen less. But, but the, the opportunity is not gone, right? It's changed. It's maybe more difficult, but it's still there for sure. Yeah. And I, we've been talking a little bit here in the parish, too, of this this isn't forever yeah. <laughs> in this weird time. And even if the opportunities are functionally a little bit less, I think, I think there's some, you know, <laughs> that's valid. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, we still have to be ready and kind of mm-hmm. prepared and even to have that mindset of like, so when things do open up and we do have easier encounters, yeah. um, that we're going to be in, in a place, um, 
to to bring the word and to yeah. be the light and, and but to i also think even this. now when the opportunities come up because they still do and they still will yeah like and i think both are true but it, it's yeah. it's to practice them right to say yeah. like if you can't practice it you know and how you're having a phone call with a loved one or in a zoom conversation or whatever mm-hmm. um you know that's why do I think suddenly in June when everything is open, I'm going to be better at that? Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. It's like the idea of pushing to say, well, I'm never going to exercise, but suddenly January 1st, I'm going to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. It's just like we, it's a constant thing we need to be working on. Right. And we can't use the excuse of a, of a virus, right. To not be working on being like, and just to, to do the good that's in front of us to do. Yeah. And always be like, and I think what I can take from this in terms of my, my goal from this call to witness in word, like I, where I always feel that this, the need to grow in myself is really, it's in my mind, it's wisdom and courage. And it's to the wisdom to know, like, when do the words come? Cause as like, I, I dress like this in public most of the time. So people see me like most people know that it's a priest. So there's a lot of basic witnessing happening there sort of all the time, but where I don't always know and where I where I want to grow is at what point do the words of faith come? Mm. And what points do I share? And so, yeah, to grow in that wisdom and that courage, to wisdom to know when the time is right to use the words and then courage to take those times and take them well. That's great. Yeah. Um, for me, when I was thinking that challenge was, um, I already said a little bit, was readiness. And mm-hmm. also looking back a little bit of your self-awareness piece of it is, why do I, looking back of when I, I hesitate, when, yeah. like, cause I think if we're all being honest, you can think of a time where you had an opportunity and you didn't take it oh, yeah. either word yeah. or witness, whatever way you want to go. And, uh, it's good to look at the ones what, that you do well as well. But I think mm-hmm. it's for me anyways, for growing is to look at the, when did I hesitate? When did I not act and try to figure out why? And for me, I think sometimes is I struggle with, sounds weird cause I talk very easily, but it's mm-hmm. a, sometimes a mask of confidence. Yeah. And I think it's spe- sp- specifically for me with uh, proclaiming the word is um am i you know prepared enough am i intelligent enough am i am my words you know going to be true you know is the confidence that i don't speak out of line or that kind of stuff and instead of like i was thinking well how do i do that and i was like well just become more confident in the word well how do you do that by sitting in the word so that's been a big thing in my life and i've been talking about that is just spending more time in scripture um, so I, I have a bit more of a boldness and a confidence to proclaim the word because mm-hmm. I'm being, I'm cl- literally closer to the word kind of yeah. in my, kind of my daily practice. So that's been a thing I've been working on. There's this Bible in a year thing and throwing it out there and, um, just, just connecting back to that story. Yeah. So dwelling in the word so that we can share the word yeah. when the time comes. And I guess the other one, which is kind of a connection was, um, Again, this is a thing for me, but I'll share it out to the world. Is your connected to courage and boldness is um, to not let your previous successes or failures uh, paint the future. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and also with that, we had kind of talked about to say like we're called to be the the light and and the star, but like we're not what we're pointing to. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're pointing to Jesus, and it's easy to look at that time when I tried to broach a subject and it totally fell flat or whatever is we we treat it as our success or failure but it's like you might just be a marking point or like your anthony hopkins story that he had shared which i thought was good was like Mm -hmm. that first one was very pivotal but it wasn't the moment right it it took both yeah maybe some people know what we're talking about right because so the the first one being someone took him to the church of the holy sepulcher and he saw these nuns in prayer and i'm sure those nuns had no idea that anthony hopkins saw them praying right or if they did happen to notice hey that's anthony hopkins maybe no idea what that had stirred in him Mm mm-hmm and then the second one, he's at AA, and someone asks him, "Why don't you trust God?" And that opened him up. And yeah, I think, like I've been, I think in my own life, that a lot of times where people have had a bigger impact on my faith journey than they will ever know. And I think sometimes, yeah, if if we don't see the fruit, we can not believe that it's there. Yeah. But I know in my own life, yeah, there are people who born fruit in me who don't know it. So I often, I, I trust in that when I'm suddenly sometimes wondering, like, I gave him this homily to like. 30 people at a time. <laughs> like what, what, what is this doing? Yeah. What good is this doing? Yeah. And sometimes you do see it, you hear it, you get these beautiful feedback from people. A lot of times you don't, but that doesn't mean it's not there. Yeah. And yeah. I guess that was just a, a good reminder for me and kind of my challenges is, is I think you said the word trust, 
mm-hmm. right? And then my conference was like, be with the Lord. Try, and then, and then, you know, show up. Was it, you know, St. Padre Pio is, you know, the pray, hope, and don't worry, don't worry. or yeah. whatever that phrase is, right? And the idea of hope is like, hope is not in action, right? It's yeah. like, it's like pray, act, and, and, and hope, and you're trusting in the Lord, right? That it's like you, you, you surrender your life and, and the action that you take and, and leave the fruit up to him. Um, and, and, and take the feedback when he, when he gives it to you, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, and, and I, and I think that's also not being afraid to share the stories of fruit. I th- like, I, yeah. I, I felt a need for that to, to express the good things God's doing in my life or where I see it, because especially where we're more isolated and it's a bit of a vacuum, it, it, it can be easy to think that God's not working. Right. You yeah. Know? So yeah. I, I think there is a place to, to share that, that witness in the story, uh, not necessarily always totally of what God has done in your life, but what you've seen in others' life, right? Like, I think yeah. that that's a way to, to be light and share light as well. And, um, and ultimately just to know, like, I, I'm called to be, to be faithful, you know, and the fruit mm-hmm. comes from my faithfulness. Yeah. Um, and, and to not shy away from those opportunities. And it's, it's interesting where I have gotten feedback. I agree with you, you know, often it's not usually my professional setting. It's like, the small little moments where I shared a word, you know, and I, it was the word more than witness. Yeah. But it was in ones that I thought were pretty offhanded or not essential. I was just being a good friend or a yeah. good thing. And the Lord is like, yeah, see that. <laughs> and I think it's important because then it's, it's very real, right? It's just you being you and faith being a part of that. And it's being shared in a, in a real way. Yeah. Another thing too, that I, I, I always feel I need to keep in mind too, because we talk about, proclaiming faith and that's the language you use and the part of it is proclaiming but it's not just a matter of like me lecturing someone over coffee about jesus <laughs> right but i think and sometimes i think that language can mislead us and for me too i think where i have seen the fruit or i know i have seen the fruit more often is in like faith sharing conversations yeah and so much more it's been like asking the right question more than making the right point i find can do more and like and just so one question i found is really powerful is a question of how would you describe your relationship with God? And just opening up that door for people has done a lot. And I, I wonder too, sometimes like, why is it that, that the right question is so powerful, but often it is because there, there is always grace at work in people. God is always at work in people. And sometimes people don't see it or aren't aware of it or aware of it, don't realize what that is God at work there. But the right question can help people to, to open that up and to see what the Lord is doing there and what more he is calling them to. Mm-hmm. And with something someone discovers themselves, it's much more powerful than some priest telling them a certain thing. Yeah. And yeah. It, even the power of, like you said, of, of conversation, of good questions. And I think it's sometimes it is when you, when you pry someone open to share, it can be very disarming because otherwise yeah. when you start a conversation of like, this is who God is, that is like they're, People could be bringing in woundedness or preconceived notions or anticipated judgments. Yeah. Right. But then when you say it was like, he's like, how would you, how would you describe God? You know, or yeah. what's the question? What, who, how would you describe your relationship God, with God? Yeah, how do you describe, you know, a relationship with God or like, um, I think Bob Rice, who does a lot of ministry and teaches in Steubenville talks about like the idea of like his images of Jesus and it's kind of a joke mm-hmm. of like, well, like what is, who's Jesus to you? Yeah, what does that, that look too. like? You know, yeah. and, and kind of frame and, and go from that. And, uh, and it's organic and it's natural and it's it's pretty kind of disarming, right? Yeah. And um, I also just think many people are just waiting to be asked. Yeah. One thing too, I think that matters there is that the asking really is coming from a place of love. Yeah. Because we can also ask in a really judgmental way, right? Like, who is God to you? And after you answer, I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> you know. So yeah. I think the but the the asking that comes from a place of like. I do love you and I'm sure God is at work in you and I love to see what God is doing in your heart. Yeah. We've talked about yeah. that a lot here and you've done a lot here mm-hmm. in the parish the last couple of years is like, it comes in the context of like, you know, what's, what's around that question, right? Like yeah. what's the state of that friendship or the relationship, you know, what led to that conversation, um, you know, that sets the table as it, as it were, is mm-hmm. very important. Right. And a lot of it that I think we've noticed and we're trying to work on here at the parish is, is, is the culture. Like what yeah. was the experience in this community? Like, does this feel safe? Like even, you know, uh, back when we were able to do it all, like when, 
you know, wife and I and the kids, you know, took part of a series of the face studies was like coming and having a potluck together and families and feeling comfortable and feeling welcomed and, yeah. and safe and ex- people excited to see us, you know, and, and suddenly, and then moving into faith conversations, yeah, and then going into the faith conversations, which yeah. are led and pretty explicit, you know, like this is what we're going to try to go, but, yeah. um, are very open ended, but also like what came right before we shared life together, Yeah, you know, and yeah. I got, to understand and they got to know me a little bit better and so you know we're a little more disarmed we're a little bit more at peace and frankly we've we build trust yeah you know and when when there's trust um we're more likely to be to be vulnerable right yeah Uh, and i find i i love just walking through these there are discovery faith study sessions and if i walk through on the very first day often there's some awkwardness there because people don't know each other and I'm in the church, but can I be real? And it's, but I come in by like week three or four and it's beautiful. And the way that the community changes and is built just over those few weeks is really yeah. a beautiful thing to see. I mean, we've even seen it yeah. in, yeah, those faces, those groups wanting to continue on or the friendships yeah. that kind of are birthed from there, or we see in some of our small groups and, you know, you said you dropped in on like when the high school uh, girls group was doing the escape room was competing against the guys group and uh, they beat the guys by, by like 40 15, seconds, 40 seconds. And they were so excited. So proud of themselves. They used extra clues though. So that's oh, what the dudes oh are on boy. They're, oh, we're wow. throwing some shade. There's a little <laughs> they did friendly, not tell com- me this when friend, I friendly competition, <laughs> but it was like the sense of like, uh, yeah, some of them knew each other, but like, I, I know I was there, you know, with, you know, Michelle and the leaders getting started that they're a bit more quiet and what is this thing going to be? We're new in high school. And it's like, yeah, suddenly the, the, there's a friendship and a, a, you know, and a bond that forms and it's, and it's not like rocket science either. Right. Yeah. Like, it's just like, just share life, create a, a safe environment and uh, also like continue to show up. I think that's been there in my life a little bit with this when it comes to witness and words is, is there a paired thing? And when I've, put myself or our family in a position to be in somebody's life, you know, in, in a meaningful way, mm-hmm. uh, the opportunity to sh- share the word of God, uh, comes. Yeah. Yeah. You I know? think that's it. Like when, when the relationships are real and also when the faith is real, then, uh, the chances to share, they, they grow out of that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I guess from that is the ultimate challenge is like, okay, to check in the opportunity will come but then are you taking it? Yeah. You know, and, and it, I'll be honest, it's a mixed bag, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm not always <laughs> yeah. taking advantage. Or of sometimes it. like I don't take it well, or I go too far. <laughs> it can also be the other yeah. mistake that can be made that I have made. And yeah. I, I think that's, you know, as we probably go to wrap up here soon is I think you're right there in the end is it's a little bit, you know, like we do like a postmortem of events or that <laughs> type of stuff is I, it sounds weird, but like it's, it's okay to, analyze somewhat like did this go well or why didn't oh, yeah. that go yeah. well and because you know the holy spirit can speak through that and at a point to say like well maybe you're like, well, that was not a, a timing right like to be yeah. aware of well where were we emotionally like i know sometimes like like writing emails we all have this thing when you're angry write an email in microsoft word and then save it yeah. and delete <laughs> it and don't send it right like it's yeah. you know starting to be aware and, and to look at that stuff of like okay there is tools or practices and refinement you know oh, yeah. As, yeah. and that's my thing with the word okay if i'm more comfortable in understanding the kerygma and the scriptures and the verse i'm more likely to initiate that conversation because i feel i have that you know tool built as yeah. it were you know to have that conversation yeah and that every one of us can grow in that yeah or for me one like a learning experience if i'm walking through a bar and somebody yells hey preacher the first time that happens i'm like what am i doing i don't know how to <laughs> respond to this it's just uncomfortable <laughs> But then after the fact, and that has happened, and then I think, oh, well, like, should this happen again? And it probably will, and it has. Like, what's a appropriate way to respond to that? But so still what be is quite the so appropriate shocked. way? What's I'm it? still trying to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, still growing in that. But I think just to respond, like, boldly and, like, hey, or like, yeah, I'm a priest. Just And that can sometimes open the door and disarm things a bit. Well, yeah, yeah. and I, I, I think that's good because who knows what the next sentence of that person's mouth exactly. is, right? They might be super excited or they might be coming at you. And, yeah. you know, that that's a whole different way to, to go about it. But you don't know. But if you could respond with, at least for me, it's been with, like, confidence and love. Yeah. That's and good. then see where that goes from there. Very cool. Yeah. Any uh, any parting shots or, or questions or challenges you want to throw oh, down? Yeah. Well, I think that, I like how you started off saying, like, where is... 
where is your comfort zone between witness and words and then lean into the discomfort hmm. look over the where the lack of comfort is and see like is that a way that I, I can grow in at this time so you heard it here internet father matt wants you to be uncomfortable in I, do. <laughs> I do um but and i think more than that is uh, through your, your challenges like god wants us to grow yeah you know, healthy, and that's where the growth comes from. I forget who yeah. said that. I, I want to say Ryan Mitchell, but he quoted maybe somebody else. But mm-hmm. healthy, healthy things grow. Yeah. You know, and uh, there, there's, there's a time for that, and, and it's even, even my sense of winter. We think everything's dead or dark or this, but like underneath, we know that the the soil is being tilled and prepared, and you know, spring is 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 coming. But like winter is not a, a you know. A, I'm not a super farmer, so don't quote me on anything. Yeah. But like what happens in winter is important to spring. Yeah. You know, and so there's 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 work to be done. Like the Lord is providing mm-hmm. us opportunities for witness and words. And uh, let's not be afraid to shine. Yeah. Let's, lean into it now. Arise into 2021. Good things are ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's all I got. That's great. Uh, stay tuned for more wonderful, exciting things. <laughs> Uh, we're going to try to, again, always continue to grow and develop this. And so we got some different ideas. We maybe have some, uh, the hot seats going to be pretty full here. I oh, think we've in, got some people January. lined up. Yeah. Uh, going to dive in some good topics. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, again, share maybe in the comments, you know, where is the struggle? Do you, where do you feel you're being called to be uncomfortable? Is it witness or words? And, uh, and maybe if you've had a, a success or a failure that you think there's some wisdom to share, uh, don't be af- afraid to share it and uh, to be the light. But until uh, next week, God bless you, and we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye, everyone.